I would not have stood in front of anyone or said anything in public. Aren't you grateful today? Aren't you thankful? God has blessed us in so many ways. And, you know, often we just take for granted the blessings that God has provided. And uh, two weeks ago when I left service, I had to be in Little Rock. My son took me on a bucket list trip. And I was privileged to go to Scotland with my son and play a course that we had dreamed of all of our lives. It's the old course at St. Andrews. And I was privileged to do that with my son, and I'm so grateful that, that he was willing to do that. And I'm just, uh, that's a very special thing that I have. And it was an incredible time, and I beat him. <laughs> you know, thankfulness is an important subject in the Bible. In fact, it's so important. The, Paul writes about thankfulness, being thankful so many times. And in the book of Colossians, which uh, we're dealing with today, and I'm, it's really, I didn't know I was going to have this much time, so I really prepared a short sermon. And uh, it's, I'm not going to go into the theology of the passage at all. I just want to talk about being thankful thankful for what God has provided and what he has done. 170 times in the New Testament, the word thankful or a word that is similar to thankful is used. And Paul uses the word thankful seven times in the Colossian letter, letting us know how grateful that he is for that group of people. There are two Greek words that make uh, an interesting uh, word in the English language. And the word thankful we translate that word grace often, or to confess. So today we're confessing our thankfulness for His grace. And God has been so good to us. And this thankfulness is a verbal expression of what God has provided through His only begotten Son in the works of His mercy, His grace, His love, His sovereign blessings in our life and in our world. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. And if you want a theological outline, I'll give that to you as I read this text. Starting in verse 12, Colossians 1, it says, Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Verse 13, He has delivered us. That's the first thing. He has delivered us from what? From the power of darkness. And conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption. He has translated us. He has redeemed us. And then He has forgiven us of our sins. What an amazing Lord. Let us pray. Father, I pray today that you would just take our hearts, our lives, and make us the grateful people that we should be. Help us, God, to recognize how incredible you are in giving to us hope, assurance, faith. You have delivered us. Lord, you have redeemed us. You have forgiven us. You have provided for us a wonderful place called heaven when we leave here. And you have given us an abundant life today. So help us, Father, to be grateful, thankful people, not just during this time of the year, but always. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. An interesting thing happened when we were <clears throat> in Scotland. Everything it's about Christmas right now, and everything is decorated for Christmas. And, and without thinking, my son said, well, I don't guess they're going to celebrate Thanksgiving. And then he caught himself that they're not going to celebrate our Thanksgiving. But you know what? We should always be celebrating Thanksgiving. We should be thankful every single day. So I want to give you some general reasons to be thankful today. And the first one is this, because it honors God. Being thankful honors God because God has given us so much and when we are thankful in return, it shows that we are honoring Him adequately. When we're thankful, we recognize that God is the giver of every good gift that we have and, and we are dependent upon Him for what He provides for us. We can't provide it ourselves. Think with me uh, along these lines for just a moment. The miracle of life 
The miracle of life is we're sitting here today. Think about the ability. You're able to see me, and I'm able to see you. I was able to read. Imagine the muscles it takes. Imagine the focus it takes for the eye to be able to focus on the Scripture, to be able to read the Scripture, for me to be able to look at you, and at that quick be able to determine details about your life and your face and uniquely know who you are that quick. That is a miracle of God. He has given us the miracle of vision. And often we just simply take it for granted, but we shouldn't. And you know what? Our lungs, think about it, the gift of our lungs. Today alone and every single day, my lungs are going to inhale and exhale about 11,000 liters of oxygen every single day. My heart is going to beat, and if I live an average life, over three billion times. When he says we are fearfully and wonderfully made, we need to recognize how beautiful that is. My brain gives me the ability to reason, to think, and to articulate my words and then speak my words. And boy, I'll tell you, how thankful are you in the mornings to have a cup of coffee? <laughs> You wake up and you need to wake up. That cup of coffee just gives you that. And God gave us coffee beans to be able to grind those beans, to be able to drink that coffee, to be able to smell that wonderful aroma, and to be able to enjoy that incredible taste. But you know what? We're also grateful for our families, for our faith, for our church. We're grateful. And every single one of those gifts is a gift that Almighty God has given us. And what we need to recognize is how blessed we have been in God's infinite wisdom and purpose and grace He has provided for us. Paul says in the Corinthian letter in chapter, uh, 2 Corinthians in chapter 4, verse 15, he says these words, For all things are for your sakes. Did you catch that? All things are for your sakes. That grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound, there it is, to the glory of God. And, and we get to, to say, thank you, Lord, for what you have done. It honors God when we are thankful, grateful people. The second thing I want you to understand about this text today is this, that, that thankfulness is also commanded in Scripture. We are commanded to be grateful, thankful people. Now, how many people do you know that go about their lives simply grumbling, unhappy, miserable, critical, condemnatory, censorious, um, they, they, they don't have any peace in their life. And, and, and God wants us to be thankful, grateful people. That, and we are commanded by Scripture to be that type of person and to be that type of person always. Because when we are filled with thankfulness, I mean, it just exudes out of our life. And people see that. They sense that. They're drawn to us. How many people that are negative are you drawn to? How many people that are positive are you drawn to? I mean, there's just something that's magnetic about that. It just brings you in. Psalm 100 in verse 4 says these words, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. You know what? This Thanksgiving season, I want to, I want to challenge you to do something. I want to challenge you this Thanksgiving and Christmas not to be focused on yourself. But I want you to focus on someone else and look for someone to bless. Look for someone to invest in. Find that one. And, and whether it's, it's for salvation or whether it's monetary purposes or whether it's just coming and saying, I want to befriend you. I want to, you to know that I love you and I am willing to invest in your life. Find one person. You know what it will do? It will make an incredible difference not only in them, but it will make a difference in you. And so often we get so self-centered and so focused on our needs, what we want. Psalm, or excuse me, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, a passage says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So give thanks that you get the privilege of investing in someone else's life. You know, the Apostle Paul, he went from church to church to church. You know what he was doing? He was investing in their lives. He was making a difference eternally. 
And, and, and as Paul went, Paul had that grateful heart. And, and you know what a grateful heart does? A grateful heart sees every day as a gift from God and that we are to give our lives back to Him. Now, thankful people, thankful people have the privilege of not focusing on what they lack, but focusing upon what they have. And so many people, you know, they're the if-only people, I call them. If only I had this, then I'd be happy. If only I, I could be over there. If only I had that job. Listen, stop. Stop. And you say, Lord, thank you for your incredible gift of love. Now, another general reason to be thankful is this. Because of the dangerous consequences of thanklessness. It's dangerous to not be thankful. And there's so many people that go through life and, and they're not. But, but, but thanklessness, it's dangerous to us, it's dangerous to others because our entire life begins to revolve around negativity and criticism and, and, and it dishonors God and it doesn't build the kingdom of God. All it does is drive wedges between people and churches and families and pushes people away. And the focus becomes not on God as a good giver of life, but it becomes on us and it's humanistic and it's egocentric and it's all focused on me, me, me. And now we take our focus off of God. So be grateful and focus on God and not upon yourself. Romans 12, 1 says these words. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. And guess what? That's just your reasonable service. That's not going overboard. That's just normal. And, and once we do that, we become the thankful people that God wants us to be. And we stop focusing on ourselves. And, 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 and we're not thankless. But you know, you think about it. A joyless, complaining life. It's reprehensible to God. Because he said in John 10, 10, I've come to give you an abundant life. And when we don't grasp that abundant life that he provides, then we're shunning the goodness of Almighty God. Think about Hebrews 12, verse 15. It says, looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Now watch, lest any root of bitterness spring up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. You see, it dishonors God. Don't be a thankless person. Be a thankful person. Be a grateful person. And you say, well, that's just not me. Then you need to refocus. And you need to change. People say, oh, I can't change. Oh, yes, we can change. You see, since thanklessness is so prevalent, and thankfulness, it seems, is not. You think about it like this. It is in opposition to the grace of God. And, and bitterness with its companions, its twin companions come in, complaining and grumbling. And then we have that ungrateful heart. And then we begin to push people away. Instead of experiencing the joy, the wisdom, the grace, the love, the mercy, and the forgiveness of God. You know what thanklessness does? It promotes pettiness. Preoccupation with self, with things, with problems. Me, me, me. Paul tells us in the Corinthian letter, 2 Corinthians, he tells us these words. In chapter 2, verse 4, he said, For out of much affliction and anguish of heart I wrote to you with many tears. Not that you should be grieved, but that you might know the love which I have so abundantly for you. I want you, I want you to know something. And I think most of you do. I pray for you constantly. I pray for you constantly. Because I love you. And you know what? I have been blessed to be the pastor of this church for over 23 years. 
and I have been blessed to be with many of you in difficult situations where you've lost family members. I've been there and cried with you. I've been there and rejoiced with you at births, at weddings. But you know what? Just like Paul, I want the best for you. I want God's absolute best for you. So the time, the time to be thankful, the time is now. And, and how, how, how do we do that? Well, first, I, I want you to understand that when we pray, when we pray, Scripture teaches us by illustration and application. In Philippians, Paul said these words. I love his words to the, to the Philippian Christians. He said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. And you know what? I have gone throughout the state bragging on you. Always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you with all joy. And he, then he said in Colossians 1, 3, we give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Every morning, the prayer is for you. Second thing, it teaches us, it teaches us by direct admonition. This is what it does. In the Philippian letter in chapter 4, verse 6, Paul said, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with there it is. Thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. Continue earnestly in prayer. Be vigilant in it with, say it with me, thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. That, that is the whole focus that we are thankful, grateful people. Third, third thing. We should give thanks in everything and for everything. You're saying, oh, okay, John, you've gone too far now. I'm not going to give thanks for everything, and I'm not going to give thanks in everything. Ephesians 5.20 says these words, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Thessalonian letter, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You say, okay, I, I can't do that. I can't give thanks in all things. And you say, John, why should I give thanks when the circumstances seem so bad why should I give thanks for that well I want to tell you are you listening often your present evaluation of a situation is not your best evaluation oftentimes you think this is really bad and God is doing something that is going to be really good. It's happened in my life, and I promise you it's happened in your life. I think about the life of Joseph. Remember old Joseph? I mean, he was a guy, man, his brothers despised him. Uh, he, he was hated. He was sold into bondage. He was accused of rape. He was placed in jail. And then he was brought up to, to interpret a dream of Pharaoh. And at the end of his life, after his father died, his brother thought, uh oh, now he's going to get, you're going to get even. And in chapter 50, watch what it says. Joseph said to his brothers, do not be afraid. In other words, they came in trembling. They said, do not be afraid, for I am in the place of God. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day. For what purpose? To save many people. That's how it works. God can take something that is really bad in our present situation and our evaluation and then when we see the end result, God brings something incredible out of that. Incredible. And, and you're left in awe saying, God, how in the world did you work that out? But thank you. Thank you. Also, we should give thanks for our family and our faith. Every single day. I love what the psalmist said in Psalm 133.1. He says these words. Behold... How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Isn't that good? How good and pleasant it is for us to come together in unity and dwell together. I'm telling you, there's nothing quite like having peace at home. Amen?
Nothing as bad as not having peace at home. Amen? Nothing quite as good as having peace at church. Amen? Nothing quite as bad as having trouble at church. Amen? So we need to dwell in unity and peace. And you know what that does? That advances the kingdom. It builds the gospel message that it is true and it is life-changing and there's something unique and powerful about it that doesn't exist in any other area of life. Only through the mercy and the grace of God as he has delivered us, translated us, redeemed us, and forgiven us. We should be thankful for today. We should be thankful because this is the only day we have, right? I don't have tomorrow. Yesterday's gone. This is it. This is the moment that we all have in life. Psalm says, 100, verse 4, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. And I would add, today. Bless his name today. Be grateful today. We have been in the presence of the Lord today. We've been able to see a skit. We have been able to uh, see signing and singing. We have been blessed to see our youth come up here and, and, and sing. We have been blessed to be in our Sunday school classes. We're soon going to be blessed with an abundance of food that we're not even going to be able to consume at all. We have been blessed. And we need to be thankful people. God has given us so much. A little boy was saved at church. He was nine years old, and he was so happy. He was so happy. He got baptized that evening, and when he came down out of the baptistry, and he came back to the sanctuary, his little feet couldn't contain himself, and he had to take off sprinting into the sanctuary. He was so happy. But, but, an older man said to him, Son, we don't run in church. Guess what that did to his happiness, his joy? But, another old man said, Son, run, run. Run! Run! And you know what? I believe God smiles when there's joy in our hearts and thanksgiving upon our lips. So you know what? It's okay. Run! 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 Because one day, guess what? The Lord's going to call us home and you know what? I believe when I enter into his courts, I'm going to run. I am going to run. And I am going to embrace. And I don't know what all I'm going to say, but I do know this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So today, if you're not a very thankful person, And change. And it starts by simply becoming one, saying it, saying it, saying it, encouraging others, building them up. Guess what? You're not a hugger? Hug somebody. Need four meaningful hugs a day. Encourage somebody. Build somebody up. Build them up. Be thankful. And if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as personal Lord and Savior, listen, the most grateful moment in your life is when you come to the cross and you are redeemed, you are forgiven, and you are born again because your destiny is sealed. If you need to come to Jesus, you do it today. If you need to join this assembly, you do it today. And do it with thanksgiving because we are going to serve Him. Amen. Let's bow. Father, thank you. Thank you for the gift of thankfulness. 
And thank you, Father, for the presence of your Son who provides that. And God, I just pray you would open hearts and lives. And if somebody here is ungrateful, they're not thankful, they're thankless. Father, they would come today and say, Lord, change my heart. Help me. Help me to be an encourager, a builder. And Father, I pray if there's anyone here today that needs to not only give their life to Christ, but someone that needs to come and join this local assembly, they'd do it today. And if they need to pray, Lord, they'd pray. Whatever the need, Lord, thy will be done. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Stand and come as you have needs. touching your heart and moving across your heart strings. Don't wait. You come. God gives us the privilege of being thankful people and we can respond to that outpouring of His mercy with our actions by saying, Lord, thank you. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. What an incredible gift that we can give back to God as He's given us the gift of life, and the gift of eternal life. For us, just to simply bow and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to have one more verse. If you need to come, come quickly. Come quickly, right now. Oh, come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Seated for a minute, I'm going to ask uh, you guys just come right up here with me Right up here 
this is a couple that I had the privilege of uh, counseling with. Larry, come on up. Counseling with, uh, gosh, a year and a half, two years ago, right? And uh, had the privilege of doing their wedding. And uh, they've come today, going to join this assembly. And this, my friend, is going to be baptized. His name is Tyler. Would you just give him a big praise? What a blessing that is. Going to be baptized tonight. And this is Larry Arnold. And Larry had been a Christian for about 30 to 40 years. And we've been talking for a long time. He's going to be baptized tonight, too. So you know what that means? Mama, you want to... You know what that means? You need to be here. If you'll follow my wife. You need to be here for that. We also have the Lord's Supper. You're going to get to observe two ordinances that are commanded by the Lord. What a blessing. Don't miss it. All right. I've been given a note. Today, the youth are going to be in the youth room uh, waiting for us to rent them out. So if you need to put a youth to work, this is opportunity. And uh, my wife also said, this is her speaking, Sandy and I are going to rent some to put up lights and decorations for Christmas. So, so I don't know who's good at that, but uh, if y'all are good at that, you're good at that, all right, all right. Pay, pays not much, but the labor's hard, okay? <laughs> Have you been blessed to be here? Is it? I, I love old Jerry Clark. Jerry Clark said, I ain't God good. Amen. Now, we have food in the back, but what we're going to do, we don't want to trample our elderly. So we're going to allow the elderly to go back first. And uh, then those of us who are not as elderly will go back, okay? I think we can go through over both sides. So if you're on that side, sprint that way. This side, sprint that way. And enjoy the food. There's so much back there. We want you to stay. You may say, I didn't bring anything. doesn't matter. Stay and enjoy it, okay? So we're going to have, uh, James is going to give a prayer. I'm going to ask you to stand. And uh, those who are elderly, let them go first. And as soon as those of you who are not, you hit the, hit the sides too and enjoy uh, the meal that God has blessed us with today. Thank you. God bless you. And uh, I'll see you tonight. Father, we are so uh, so blessed when we think about everything that's been provided for us and the love that you have for us, Lord, how deep you care for us. Lord, let us show that to each and every one we come into contact with. We thank you so much for the food that's been prepared today and those that prepared it. Please bless it. May it nourish our bodies. Thank you, and we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Rock. 